and sit down. Another wonderful, fabulous, fantastic episode of More Content Talk. That's the only show that cuts through all the glam, the glitz, and all the bullshit to bring you the truthiest news that we here at More Content Talk can find. Don't you just love the truth? Doesn't it taste good? Doesn't it remind you of those uh, delicious uh, brownies your grandmother used to make? Mmm. She is the she is the semi sweet chocolate. That's the trick, you know. It's not too sweet. It's not too bitter. That's truth right there. It's just right, just right, just like Grandmama used to make. Yeah, that was a tangent. Okay, so um, what are we talking about tonight? Well, you ever feel nostalgic? You ever? You ever long for time past? I think we all do at some point. You ever wonder why? You ever wonder why you can't focus on the here and now? You ever wonder why now isn't good enough? It's either you're you're remembering the good old days or you're focusing on, you know, making a better future. I've done a lot of shows about how I think success and the chase for success and fame and wealth is overrated. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that, at least tonight. You'll hear me talk about it probably in 80 million more episodes um, that I do of more content talk or however many more I'm able to do, with infinite whatever number. Um, you'll hear me refer to that at one point or another. Uh, wealth and fame is stupid. But um, tonight I wanted to focus on why people focus on the past. So, is it really that the past was better? What do you think of when you hear the term, the good old days? Doesn't it just bring, you know, like, happy memories to mind? You know, they just instantly pop up, right? To say, yeah, I remember, you know, when I was a kid and I used to play with uh, my best friend at high school. Um, you know, and we, we would get together before class and we'd mess around a little bit and, you know... Uh, make fun of some of the other kids or whatever whatever your memories are you know you you cut class a little bit you know hung out with your friend or uh maybe just uh, helping someone you know i know one of the one of the fondest memories i have um is uh working in at what at the time was referred to as special education um which is a kind of uh insulting term but um, let me tell you something um, that brought great joy to me, um, and it, it was a it was a completely selfish thing. I didn't do it to help people. It just you know, it's something about uh, people who we consider um, different, uh, very joyful people, very happy, um, and they're a joy to be around. And um, I'll never forget uh, the last. Um, not the last show I did, but but kind of one of the fonder. You know, I did this uh, particular uh, play, uh, Taming of the Shrew, and I played the lead um, in that play at uh, Northside Theater Company in San Jose. It's a little small, intimate theater company, but that's one of the reasons you do shows like that is, uh, you know, one of the things about playing large venues is that, you know, it's all very separate. You know, you can't have you know, thousands or really even hundreds of people um, coming up to you to congratulate you after the show. You'd be there all night, and um, the, the tech people have to go home. Um, so you, you can only do that, and you can only get that experience um, when you have these small audiences. And so, you know, I worked for Peanuts, uh, you know, because I got a soft spot for the theater, um, which... Who knows if that's still there or not. But I had one anyway. Um, and so I... And I really just, you know, I wanted to... I wanted to act again. And there wasn't a lot of work, you know, in all honesty. Um, and this was before the pandemic, by the way. Um, things were 
were bad before that too um a lot of people don't seem to realize that but um you know i i wanted to work uh so i did this play and um i'm glad i did it because you know this particular show that i did there was um this child who who had autism uh, it was a young, young child. Didn't say a word to me. But man, I'll tell you, person, woman, seeing that smile, I don't know. It really, it really brightens your day. It makes it all worth it, even though you didn't make much money. And hey, you know, maybe no one will ever talk about this little play again. It's worth it, you know, just to, to meet with um, people um, who are different. Um, and uh, maybe, you know, make him smile a little bit. Um, the kid really seemed to enjoy the show. So that's that's much more what it's about when it comes down to it. Now, that is a that is a great memory, isn't it? It, it really is. I mean, you could you could write it in a Hallmark card. You can make a movie out of that. I mean, that'd, be, that'd make a great script, right? The, the the hard nosed actor who who risk it all puts puts his whole life and career on the line just to make one little kid laugh. Man, that that sell, man. Ron Howard could direct that, right? He'd probably make a million, you know, millions and millions of dollars. Oscar nominated, Oscar winning, Oscar worthy. Every you know major Meryl Streep. Uh, you know, um, Natalie Portman would make a guest appearance. I mean, there would be all kinds of uh, sequels. This would be an amazing series. It, it could turn into a video game, even. And, you know, there'd be all kinds of uh, posts about it on Twitter, and, you know, there'd be all kinds of memes. I mean, you know, you could even do something to the extent of, uh, you know, putting it with mittens like Bernie the Bernie Sanders meme I mean that this is already written the story has already been written this is my point there's nothing unique about this right this memory that I just told you that I'm sure was very touching to you and it you know what it means a lot to me right I'll tell you why it means a lot to me because that was one of the better moments of that really not so great experience. And you know, it's nothing against the the, the people who put on the show or um, anything like that. Northside Theater Company is a great theater company, you know, and, and you know, Hopefully they, they make enough money so that they can continue putting on shows, and I totally endorse you to go see them. So I'm not criticizing them. I, I'm talking about the way we live, and I'm talking about... You get so wrapped up in what was, because what is now, what's going on right now, isn't really that acceptable all the time. You can't accept working and working and working and working and getting nowhere, can you? Can you accept that? Because I don't think that most people can. I think that most people are playing games and they're pretending as if they can. And I think that they're fooling no one but themselves. Because it's very obvious that you cannot push yourself so much all the time and be content with where you're at because you're not anywhere you're, you're all over the place you're just constantly moving forward and this is something that money can't cure you can't buy contentedness right you can buy pleasure pleasure is is, is easy you know, get a porn subscription, uh, find an escort, um, something, you know, I don't know, get a cam girl, whatever, whatever your thing is, right? You can buy pleasure, but you can't buy 
contented. You can't pay, like, say, to have... I mean, unless maybe you're, like, a multi-billionaire or something. You can't pay to have what is going to make you happy as you are. And you ever notice, like, the first time you see something that people say, hey, this is great. Like, you know, I saw a sushi donut today. So this is just a donut that's that's made out of a sushi roll, right? So it's cool looking, right? It looks cool. I, mean, I thought about it for a second, and I was like, what is so appealing about this, right? This is the same fucking sushi that was in the roll. They just put it in a fucking shape. But, but they were advertising it as it was like new. It was like, whoa, sushi donut, brand new invention, wow. It wasn't it wasn't anything it was just they put it in a circle but people were like it was like wow sushi donut wow I don't know man um, woman person um, does that make sense is it is it good just because it's new Or are you just trying to get away from the present? Because it's always the past or the present that people seem to not really get. Good old days, nostalgia. What do you think of? Do you think of cartoons that you saw when you were a kid? I remember cartoons. I remember watching cartoons a lot when I was a kid. I watched cartoons a lot because I was sick a lot. I was sick all the time as a kid. I was a very ill child. Um, so I watched a lot of cartoons. And those cartoons were funny, don't get me wrong. And I, I had a lot of great memories from watching those cartoons. But again, the surrounding situation was not so great. There were other things that were going on. It was not just me watching cartoons. Uh, my parents were going through relationship struggles. My father was getting ill and he was getting cancer. He was working himself to death and very unhappy and depressed. Um there were people in my life who were getting sick and um, almost dying which you don't really you know in America you're kind of taught well don't think about it and just pretend it's not happening and then things will get better and um, that's that's not true and that's a really terrible thing to teach children by the way Um, so there were all kinds of issues and, you know, people were having money struggles and moving in and moving out and, you know, all of this stuff and, you know, come to think of it, like when I think about it, if I really think about it, if I look back on the situation now, I'm not completely down with the idea that it was good I mean it was it was it was the best that we could do and that's fine you know we, we got together as a family and we did our best and I don't hold grudges um, because I know that for the most part people do their best even even evil people it gets that deep for me because that's their best. You know, people you call evil. I don't call people evil, but, you know, I use the term because that's what people refer to bad, you know, bad or whatever you want to call it. You know, the, the, the thing we don't like, those things we don't like, that that's evil. Um, so even they, <laughs> that's all they can do. You know, we, we have the terms like, well, we should do better. Who are you talking to? 
are you talking to people who are already doing normal things? Because, yeah, normal people can always do better. <laughs> but, you know, people who are indoctrinated... And, and taught that hatred is gospel and that if they go against it, then, you know, there's going to be repercussions. And oftentimes there are those repercussions and they're not coming from spirits. It's just, you know, the community, right? Think about that. Yeah, I mean, it's not coming. It's coming from their community. If you fuck around and, you know, get a big chest in a heavily uh, religious community, they'll ostracize your ass in no time. All that shit about um, kindness and forgiveness, that, well, that goes right the fuck out the window if you go against the doctrine. So don't get it twisted. Don't think that there aren't people being held hostage by this whole thing. I, I, I got in a little discussion with some asshole who was talking about being very you know exceptional in, in saying well that's not how it is in america it's, it's basically you talk to these people on social media and it's like you're having a conversation with cartman right like yeah and you know after a while you don't pay attention but essentially the argument was this america is different that you can't have Nazi Germany in America. That's not possible. You can't have, um, you know, indoctrination in America. That's not how we do things. It's it's too complex for you to understand. <laughs> yes, that is what people who have been indoctrinated say, right? Well, leave it to the master, the, the, the preacher, the, the snake oil salesman, the expert, whatever you want to call it, whatever they're calling it today. Just leave it to them. They'll figure it out. They'll think about it for me. Again, trying to escape the president and escape responsibility. Again. Because... We're hardwired to do that. We're hardwired to get away from things that make us feel, you know, bored, uncomfortable in any way. Let's find a way out of it. What was so great about the good old days? You know what I remember when I was a kid? I remember gay people couldn't get married. You hear that? It wasn't allowed. And in fact... If you talked about it, people laughed at you. That sound good? You want to go back to that? What do you want? Don't say good old days. Don't say it. You're, you're asking for something you don't want. You know what happened if you were, a, you were a young boy and you tried on a dress in the good old days when I was a boy? You know, boys are, are children. They're curious. They try on dresses. They try on uh, other gender stuff. They, they're interested because they don't do it and they, they, they don't understand. And I'm talking young. I'm talking four, three years old. They don't fucking know. But you know what's common in the good old days? Yell. Yell. What the hell is wrong with you? Don't do that. That's disgusting to a four-year-old. sitting there talking to a four-year-old like a grown-ass man all, and embarrassing them shaming them that's what we call it now in the good old days it was called a talking to i'm gonna give you a stern talking to and you see that was an upgrade from a whooping i didn't get whoopings my dad got whoopings those are the real good old days you want to go back to that Let's talk about our grandparents a little bit and, you know, what they went through. If you so much as talked back in the good old days, that was grounds for a whooping.
You know, in the good old days, kids listened real good. They, they weren't loud in restaurants. You know this? Did you realize that? And in class, everyone paid attention. Oh, my goodness. It was great. It was complete and utter silence. No one spoke. You know why? Because they were terrified. They were scared. Scared stiff. The only time you could get any respite was when you were away from your parents' suit. So, you know, that, that was the only time. See, the good old days led to the hippie movement. You ever wonder why? You ever wonder why they just, you know, why, why did these clean cut, you know, brought up in church, um, Beatles loving, uh, you know, you remember the Beatles, and I, don't, don't think about the Beatles that you see now. The Beatles, when they came out, they were, they were wearing suits, they had bowl cuts, they looked like nerds, okay? This was a society of nerds, and they were raised like nerds, they were raised to be nerds. This was a, a theocratic, boring, dull, dry society that wouldn't allow even the slightest bit of difference. And you want to go back to the good old days. What's wrong with you? Who told you that lie? That those were good days. That is a lie. And it is a vicious lie. And someone means you harm when they tell you that lie. Because they, it means that they want you to go back to that and experience that. Why do they want you to experience that? What's wrong with these people that they want you to experience that abuse? They hate you. They hate that you're allowed now to bring up issues. They, they, let's, let's not even get to um, same-gendered bathrooms and, and, and allowing transsexuals to use whatever, whatever restrooms they please or what, whatever it is, right? Or just, in my opinion, what we should do, which is just get rid of the whole gender thing completely and allow people to identify as they wish. That's too complicated for a lot of people, so we can't do that. Even before you get there, <laughs> in the good old days, if you even talked about something like that, in certain states, you're going to jail. And in fact, they, they might fuck you up a little bit when you get to jail talking like that, because you can't talk like that. That's not allowed in the good old days. Racism was at its peak in the good old days. Those, those were the that those were the heydays of racism. You know, you know what a lynching is. Do you know what a lynching is? Have you ever stopped and thought about it for two seconds, longer than two seconds, and some stupid black history picture you saw on Pinterest that was probably made up? You see that picture of that, uh, that black man who's all bloody in that black and white picture, that famous picture? Have you seen that? I hope you have. The lynching ain't just hanging someone. You hang them and then you burn them. They did this in public. They did it all over the place. No one did anything. No one cared. Oh well, it's the good old days. We, hey, we don't have problems here, folks. It's utopia, you see. It's, it's the Jim Jones mindset this is utopia because i fucking told you it was utopia and if you don't fucking realize it's utopia we're gonna have a fucking problem asshole 
So come with me to the good old days, and I will show you everything you want. Because it's what you're begging for. You're begging for it every time you say, well, we can't, we, 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 we can't have um, Medicare for all. We, we, we can't go forward. We need to go back. We need to go back. We can't help everyone. We can't save everyone. We need to go back and we need to, we need to uh, go back to the basics. We need to, we need to uh, be rational. We need, we, we need to think rationally and we need to just, we need to just let people uh, who are to the left of us suffer because if we do that, then they'll all die and they'll stop asking for things. Yeah, I know the subtext, okay? I know the subtext. It's just shut the fuck up. It's just said in a very polite way. Convert to Christianity, right? Convert the heathen. Yeah, because you want the heathen to be quiet. That's the whole point. That's the whole game. Why do you even call it a heathen? Why are you calling people names? Are you supposed to be peaceful? Hypocrite? Uh-oh. There's no peace. That's a lie. That's the lie. You were not happier in the good old days. Things get better as time progresses. Things have improved, especially as time has gone on in this millennium. Things have kept improving. There have been phenomenal advancements in medicine. There have been phenomenal advancements. They, they, they killed it. They put together a vaccine in, in, in under a year. I don't care if you believe they did it or not. They did it, God damn it. And you're an idiot for not taking the vaccine. You're a moron. You're making it so that people like me can't have free speech. Because they're too scared to say to, that, that a joke might send you over the edge and have you going down and, and killing a social media owner or something. It's ridiculous. They're treating us all like criminals because of you idiots who refuse to accept reality. To live in the here and now. You know what your brain does? Your brain doesn't remember things correctly. Your brain hyper focuses on issues. This is science. And, and memory is a neurodegenerative process. You're not going to remember anything exactly how it happened. All you have is the moment. That one moment. If you do not experience it, if you just say, oh, the fuck, whatever. Oh, the fuck, well, whatever. I'm not, I'm not here. I'm not present. I'm thinking about tomorrow. I'm thinking about the past and the good old days and the <laughs> That's it. It's gone. That's another moment you just wasted. Live in the now. What good old days? Slavery? What are you talking about? What? What? Uh, w women can't work. Women have to stay home with their crusty ass husband who don't like them anyway. You know goddamn well this is ridiculous and all you people talking about the sanctity of marriage, please give me a break. You, you, you know nothing of the good old days. You know nothing of shotgun marriages. You know what shotgun marriage is? It means I'll fucking kill you if you don't get married. You, you got that woman pregnant, you get married right now and have a kid. Or we'll, we'll throw you out. We'll throw you out the house. We'll excommunicate you essentially. And so these people got married and they didn't want to get married. They brought all these goddamn kids in the world they didn't want. Then you know what they did? They left these goddamn kids for, for dead, most of them. They didn't take care of these damn kids. These Christians are always talking about they want to take care of kids. They didn't take care of these damn kids. All these damn uh, kids being left in, um, you know, single parent homes and everyone want to talk about, oh, it's the man's fault. Eh, it's the woman's fault. No, dummy. It's the good old days coming back to bite you in the ass. That was acceptable in the good old days. Right? To force people to marry each other, shame them into getting married because they had some kid and to force them to have the kid on top of it. They didn't want the damn kid. They just wanted the bone. 
but you're not okay with that, right? You got delicate sensibilities. Well, don't fucking bitch when there's a bunch of children around that no one wants to take care of then. And I don't give a damn if that hurts your feelings or not. Who fucking cares? This is your fault. This is your fault if you fucking agree with this lame-ass ideology that we need to go back to what used to be. You're part of the problem. There was nothing good about 50 years ago. When I was a kid, when I was young, Matthew Shepard got crucified because he was gay. Crucified. The good old days. What movie have you been watching? What stupid ass Hallmark piece of shit Hollywood movie have you been living in? Let's go back to the good old days when uh, we didn't have an FDA since you all hate big, big pharma, big pharma. Big pharma. Do you, do you even know what you're talking about? Some catchphrase you heard at a goddamn uh, political rally somewhere or on TV. You don't know what you're talking about. You know what Big Pharma is? There's a difference between Big Pharma and the FDA, you know. Most of you don't. The way I hear some of you talking about like the FDA is trying to poison you. Stop being so goddamn ridiculous. FDA is doing its best to try to save you and themselves at the same time. And these doctors, that's what they're doing. They're trying to do their best because they know that you're going to kill them too. That's the only reason they, they'll put up with you. It's because if you, you come at them, you kill them too. Good old days. We're in the good old days, folks. This is it. Here you go. Good old days. Plague. Remember you had to stay inside or you die because you were afraid. You didn't understand what was going to happen next. You got all these idiots running around talking about demons and it's the end of the world and revelation and oh, it's the good old days. Here we are again. You got what you wanted. Great. Here we are. Are you happy? No, because the good old days suck. It's, it's stupid to have to stay inside all the time. It's stupid to have to listen to some idiot preacher yell at someone because they put their penis in a guy's butthole it's stupid i don't care what you think about sexuality if you think that if you think it's acceptable to go outside and listen to a moron scream at someone for expressing their sexual behavior behavior you are a moron and i don't care if you do it in the church or not you're stupid good old days fuck your good old days you take that shove it right up your ass i don't want to go back i'm happy where i am perfectly fine you know what they did to people like me in the good old days people with epilepsy had a whole movement to snuff us out To kill us dead. I don't care if you walk around talking about the good old days because you're stupid or because you're intentionally trying to get to that system, which is what I think most of you are trying to do because you're very sneaky. You know, it's like the Pope who, you know, one moment he's out there talking about how liberal he is and then out of the other side of his mouth he's talking about, well, women shouldn't have the right to choose or anything. I mean, that's too much. And what, what they were celebrating because, oh, we have an undersecretary now. <laughs> we voted a female undersecretary. It's a, it's a liberal organization. The Catholics are liberal now. Just like that. Poof. Presto changeo. Because an undersecretary, a woman is an undersecretary. You listening to that? You listen. It's a slap in the face and give you any kind of position over men. It's not allowed, it's in the book. They're not gonna go against their book. They'll find little cute ways to tiptoe around it though and make you feel as if, oh yes, we're really being progressive here, aren't we? And at the same time, the Republicans are laughing at you because you look so stupid and you're doing exactly what you want them to, what they want you to do. 
We need more order. We need more social order. We have to censor everyone now because, oh, the, 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 the horrible, wretched, uh, uh, terrible scourges of society are coming for us. You're acting exactly how they want you to act. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Don't do that. Don't talk about going back to a simpler time. Don't even talk about going back to normal. There is no more normal. It's done. We have to move on. Or just relax and just enjoy the moment. Because you know what? It might not be here ever again. This is, this is, don't strive for anything. Enjoy what you have, okay? Because you're striving for something that is not existent. You're trying to make this utopia just like all these people who have done before you. You can't. You're not going to have it exactly the way you want it. Don't go back to the good old days, please. You don't want to go back there. Some of you are already halfway there. Some of you are talking about sex being bad and uh oh she she's a she's a hoe why because she had sex with a lot of people who cares why is why does that make why does it make you a slut or whatever or whatever why is it why is it bad what's what's bad who cares why are you so interested in what other people do because you got that mindset of the good old days. You got that mindset of, I'm going to give you a whooping if you don't listen to me. Or at least you got that mindset of, I'm going to give you a stern talking to, son. Everyone is not your child, and you need to grow the fuck up. That's real talk. All right, everyone. This has been more content talk. Thank you for joining us uh, tonight, as usual, here in sunny California, which is currently not so sunny um you can check us out on instagram and more content please mcp you could also check us out at twitter at more underscore content pls you can check us out on youtube uh we have a couple episodes up now and we got plenty more coming we're filming and and recording now so we got everything all the kinks worked out so you can check us out on more content please mcp at youtube um you can also check us out on Pinterest. Uh, you can find me on Quora from time to time um, because it's a great place to promote uh, YouTube videos. People love, I uh, uh, really appreciate the people on Quora who look at our YouTube videos. I really do notice that, so thank you. Um, and uh, that's all for tonight. Uh, hey, you stay you. Don't go back to the good old days. This is just fine. Bye-bye.